Welcome back folks for another uh, quick little shot shell video here. I just swung by the range after work. Didn't have time to shoot anything, but you see I grabbed about five gallons worth of holes and uh, they were kind of wet. And I mean really wet, like sitting in the, uh, you know, 55 gallon drum garbage can kind of thing. And it had just poured and rained pretty much all weekend on and off. So some of these are pretty soaked. I've kind of already started to dry them off and whatnot and, you know, do as best I can. But now I'm going to separate them between 12 and 20 gauge and miscellaneous and whatnot, as well as give an inspection and make sure none of them are totally uh, jacked up or anything like that. I've already pulled a few of them out while I was down in the garage drying them out there. But it looks like a lot of these are going to do pretty well for me. Got some double A's. These look brand new. All kinds of uh, Fiocchi's, Challengers, Estate, Federals, Winchesters. There's a clear Fiocchi. Yeah, that feels nice and thin and paper thin like a Fiocchi hole. And then we got some double A's here. There's maybe three or four of the gray ones hiding. But, you know, they'll all work the same. So yeah, after we get done doing this, I'm going to let them dry out. I had the fan, the overhead fan going on, but obviously that was kind of loud and blowing in the microphone. But yeah, if you look at that one, can't see inside there, but there's a little bit of dirt and mud and it's still pretty wet. So I was going to have the fan going and just make sure that these get dried out really nicely. We got a couple of them, a little bit of rust on them already, but a little touch up with some steel wool. I gotta go run by the hardware store and pick some of that up. And we'll touch all these up real nice. I should probably go ahead and re-size uh, and deprime them whenever I get a chance and then go from there. But make sure they're dry first. Got a Monarch with the high brass. Oh God, look how high it is. It's so much stronger because it's higher. No, I'm kidding. High brass don't mean nothing. Oh yeah, there's some, some good water marks there. But you see most of that pretty superficial. I'm just making sure that they're not completely submerged in water anymore. And probably 90% of these will be good to go, like brand new. Whoopsie. Just some little, little bits of corrosion here and there near the primers. And then depending on whether if it's uh, like a brass plating or some of this crappy just plain bare steel, that obviously looks like it gets uh, weathered a little differently. Like these 20 gauge Winchesters here. They clean up mighty fine, but I'm sure they weather differently than the brass ones. Does anyone else do this? Am I the only freaking dummy that like wipes off their, their holes and dries them or digs them out of the freaking rain or you know, like is this something people do? I'm just used to doing that for brass and then like cleaning it and wet tumbling it and whatnot. Is this something people do with their holes? Because I basically just dug through the barrel, filled my bucket, threw the trash away where it belonged and washed my hands and went home. We got a nice variety here though. More of that high brass here. We got some Fiatchis with the high brass. Rhino, super light. Wow. That's hardcore, man. I do like the uh, red, white, and blue assortment of holes we got going on. Ain't that sweet? So I understand the difference of, uh, you know, tapered versus straight wall, and then it seems like the data is pretty interchangeable as long as you match the hole to the wad or the wad to the hole. So can I like have, uh, you know, whatever load I'm using in these Winchester holes and then use the same powder and bushing 
and then just use the appropriate wad with the federals. Is that how that works? And then I could just pretty much have every single hole the same load. Is that a thing? Can you do that? Is that ridiculous? Is that silly? I'm still pretty new here, so I'm just trying to, you know, keep one load for this hole or one load for that hole or whatever. But, uh, hmm, I don't know, man. This is, uh, this is a dummy here going through five gallons of wet holes. That's a good one. And again, once again, you know, the, uh, some steel wool would clean that right up. I am more than certain. And even if not, probably more than 90% of them would be usable. I said 90, but it's probably, probably like 98% of these. But I'm just getting all the dirt and mud and crap off. You can see that's coming off this towel here. So when I go to load them, they'll be nice and ready to go. Won't be covered in crap. And obviously I can't get into the insides, but uh, I'll just let them air dry for several days before I even get to them. And I won't seal them up in bags after I'm sorting at them or whatever. So no worries there. I did, however, just get a, another package in the mail from uh, Ballistic Products. I have a feeling I'm going to become quite a frequent customer over yonder way. Ooh, there's a good one. That's a good one. But I bet I can get a firing out of it. Look at that. Aside from all that gas blow by or whatever the hell happened there on the case head, that one's probably good to go. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Anyways, yeah, ballistic products. I just got a roll crimp tool, so that's freaking sweet. Now I just need to cast a buckshot, and we'll be on to loading that stuff. And I also got the Spin Doctor case conditioning tool. It's basically a, a cone. You sit in your drill or drill press, and it goes into your case mouth there, and it'll smooth out all those ridges and bumps and whatever, and basically recondition it to uh, not brand new, but definitely more usable if you get some pretty banged up ones, or if you wanna go from the, your star crimp style to a roll crimp, it'll better open that up and uh, help you out in that department. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm pretty glad that they make it easy to determine 20 gauge. Speaking of 20 gauge, uh, hmm, got a surprise. I'll show you here in a bit, but got a surprise in the 20 gauge department. Because this, uh, this shot shell loading is sort of addicting. I don't know what it, what it is about it, but it's really fun. Maybe because I've only loaded like 50 rounds so far, 50 shells. You say rounds or shells or what do you call them? 50, 50 pieces of ammunition. Anyways, yeah, I got a surprise in the 20 gauge department. It's gonna be pretty sick, yo. I'm gonna say the majority of these are uh, Winchester Universals and double A's, which is great because that's what I already have the most of. So that makes it very easy for me to continue to uh, lean towards just pretty much using the double A's for everything. Oopsie. Or rather, I'm planning on double A's for buckshot and then Universals for target loads and whatever, but I feel like I'll uh, eventually have enough holes of whatever variety that... Whatever, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just keep collecting them. Because this was just one day after work. And that was only one out of maybe three barrels. And this one barrel was only maybe... I don't know. 
a quarter of the way full. I didn't even check the large dumpster, but it was full of uh, the clay target boxes. So there were probably several shells underneath that. But it wasn't dumpster diving day. I was heading home from work and decided to take a quick detour. So I'm happy with my spoils, my haul of holes. Yeah, very nice. Yep, see, look, double A, pretty much brand freaking new. And that's awesome because I've already got, you know, this much of a bucket to add all these to. So that'll probably be my go-to, and then I'll be experimenting with other ones here and there and on and off and whatnot. Ooh, looky there, we found one of the gray ones. Maybe one out of two or three I saw. Hopefully there's a few more, but really, I'm not uh, too worried about it. They do seem of nice quality though. Someone was saying down in the comments that there's a couple companies that actually have brass heads still. Who is that? Which ones are those? That sounds interesting. So whoever said that in the comment, let me know again because I can't find that comment. Also have a whole bunch of these Federal uh, number eight, whatever the hell these are, top guns maybe? Or do they actually say top guns if they are top guns? Maybe these are a different Federal shell. Also, what is a dram? Is that like a measurement of uh, like an old powder measurement or something? I am unfamiliar with that term, but I see it on some of these holes and boxes and stuff. You got three drams, or you got max dram, or whatever. I ain't got no clue what none of them mean. So if one of you gentlemen could edumacate me, that'd be sick. And whatever gun this came out of had some gas blowing by or something. I've had a whole bunch like this. But I'm sure they'll fire just fine for me. And there's some, yeah, seems like all these Fiocchi ones have high brass on them. Not sure why they do that, but cool. I guess it's for uh, visual identification, maybe, I've heard. Like over here, the Monarchs are higher than the Winchesters are. So maybe it was like, oh, that's my, my plus P load, or that's my buckshot versus my birdshot, or those are slugs, or I don't know, because these were over on the trap field, so I don't know what, what they'd be doing with slugs or whatever. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty much level one, zero knowledge as far as shot shell or shotgun anything goes. I don't know anything about chokes or constrictions or any of that crap. I barely understand the shot sizing and the numbers and all that. You got like 15 different buckshots and T's and BB's and B's and TT's. And it gets pretty complex for someone as simple as myself. I realize that those are all just different diameters, but uh, I haven't made that connection yet inside my head. Mm, yeah, there's some good, some good goober on there. And oh look, it's brand new. We got us some estate, some E state holes. So it's turkey season. Is anyone loading up turkey loads? Anyone going out hunting? I guess it goes on for about a whole month here in Tennessee. Maybe a little longer. 
I think they pushed it back this year for one reason or another. I don't know anything about it. I've never been a big hunter. It would be fun to go. I don't even know where to start though. I've gone deer hunting a handful of times and I should have done it more growing up, but I was a little shit and just wanted to play video games and not be in the outdoors. And now I wish I could do the exact opposite and just disconnect and uh, peace out. Ha! Wait. Yeah, Monarch, 7 8 ounce number 8 shot. So these are uh, bird loads too. The wing and clay. Intriguing. Intriguing. Well, it seems like you guys are digging the shot shell loading stuff so far. And like I said, I'm getting freaking hooked on it, man. I don't know what it is about it, but you just grab a hole, you start, and then you end up with a completely loaded shell. You don't have to worry about like trimming or head spacing or, you know, did I chamfer enough? Is my neck tension proper? Did I use enough crimp? Do I need to crimp? It's like, no, you're gonna pre-crimp, you're gonna final crimp, it looks like that. That's how it gets crimped. Not, am I gonna call it or am I gonna roll crimp or am I gonna taper crimp? So yeah, it's, it's much more relaxing and uh, more funner right now, at least maybe because it's new, but it's a lot of fun compared to metallic reloading. Oh no, it's yellow. It goes over here. Okay, sorry. Almost mixed them into the wrong piles. Mm -hmm. So yeah, is anyone uh, turkey hunting? Did you get anything yet? What's your limit? Are you on your own property? Are you public hunting? You know some people? Do you have a lease? What's your situation? Man, these are cleaning up really well. But I'm glad I'm not leaving anything sitting here because I feel like some of these here getting pretty nasty and if I were to let them sit they would just get worse so I'm gonna get that initial layer of gunk off and we'll go from there but this is an improvement from letting them sit in their own juices marinating doing whatever the hell Got a little rip right there, but I bet it'll still work. I don't know if I've ever actually picked up any that have been reloaded yet, like someone else's reload that they discarded. I don't know if I've run into that yet. I'm sure I would see like some torn, you know, little crimpy, feathery parts or. The brass might look different or resized. You're, I don't know. Like I said, I've never seen it. So I don't know what I'm looking for if they're already fired. But so far, these are all like pretty much clean. They look brand new and once fired, and I'm sure I can get at least one, two firings out of most of these. Some of these double A's, I think, are probably the uh, higher quality ones out of this batch. I don't see any Remingtons, which is unfortunate because them's my favorite so far. Although, I did run some double A's and they work very well. And I have not tried the older double A's. Who knows if I'll ever get to, but apparently those are quite a dream to run. Eh, look at that garbage. Get it off. W Light 8. Okay. What is that, a light? Like a 7 8 load or something? That's uh, a universal 7 uh, and a half. Hmm. 
Double A, Universal. Mm -hmm. Is there, are these that don't say Universal, is that a third version of Winchester? So you've got this light one, and we have a Universal and, and a Double A. Man, that's too much to keep up with. Ooh, could this one have been once fired? Or maybe twice now? Or is it just ugly? It looks like it's been a little more beat up. Feels a little more brittle, maybe. I don't know, man, but I'm gonna use it. Try to, at least. And if it fails, I'll learn from it. So that'll be fun, right? All right, well, I'm not sure how exciting this is gonna be, but let me skip ahead and we'll get to the sweet little surprise I was telling you about a little earlier. Okay, we're finally getting done with this nonsense here. And my back is starting to hurt. I'm basically just sitting in my computer chair bending over this bucket here. But it's all good, you know. It's all good. It was worth it, right? I think so. I think so, because I was just surfing the internet this morning looking looking for holes to buy, and then I'm like, wait, I can just I can just go spend a little effort and time and go and collect as many as I can carry for free. So go and put a little effort into it, you lazy dummy, and go achieve things instead of being a lazy turd. And looky there. Didn't spend any money except maybe $2 in gas to get there and back. And maybe an hour of my time between driving, picking them up, and now this is the most uh, laborious or tedious part, rather. So maybe two hours total. And now I've got, I can't count all these, but a large number of holes that will last me for quite some time, I would imagine. So there you go, little life lesson, kids. If you can go do it, just go do it and get it over with. Instead of thinking about it, just go do it. Enough life lessons from Dummy, let's check out the surprise we are talking about. Okay, there we go. Boom, load all two. Wait, you already have a load all two. Wait, this one is for 20 gauge. Boom, 20 gauge, what's up? Yep, so we're gonna be loading some 7 8 ounce loads with that. Went ahead and grabbed some appropriate wads for these, and I'm not sure which holes they'll fit into. I know that the WAAs will obviously fit the Winchesters, but I'm not sure how the uh, Challengers and Monarchs and other ones that I have already how those are gonna work out. So we will have to see on that front. But that's gonna be it for now. That was just some sorting out, some range tripping, some uh, hanging out, some chatting. So let me know down below what you guys think. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.